What's going on guys and welcome to another Doctor Who ranking video. Today I'm starting a new series where I rank every story in a specific season of Classic Who. I'm not doing these in any particular order, just randomly as I finish watching every story in a season. I thought however that I'd start off with the earliest season I've completed, Season 7. This is of course John Pertwee's first season as the third Doctor and the first season to be broadcast in colour. It's also a season that only contains four stories, so is a relatively easy one to start off with. Remember that these are my own opinions, and keep in mind most episodes in the classic series I've only seen once, so my thoughts could easily change on another viewing. Without further ado, let's get started. Number 4. Doctor Who and the Silurians This is the second story in the season, so we've already been introduced to our new Doctor, Companion and Unit. It's also the first of three stories to be seven parts long, with the first story in the season only being four parts. This one sees the Doctor do battle with a new race called the Silurians, a species that were living on Earth before humans but have since lived underground once humans arrived. They now want to take back the Earth as they were here first. I know a lot of people really like this story, but personally, I find it to be the most boring and drawn out of the episodes in this season. The Silurians themselves are fine, although some of their voices are quite annoying and one of them in particular is very overacted. It doesn't help that we don't properly see a Silurian until the very end of episode 3, making the build up rather slow. The Silurians themselves look pretty good, but the cave monster definitely doesn't, even when you consider this was the 1970s. Despite being my least favourite story in this season, it definitely isn't a bad one though. This story introduces the Doctor's trusty car Bessie, which would appear more in the future. The feud within the Silurian group is great and adds an interesting dynamic that we don't often see in Classic Who with the villains. There's some great direction and location filming here which brings the story to life. I also think despite being a bit of a slow one to get started, unlike much of Classic Who, the ending and resolution hits hard and is very good. All round, this is a very good story but has a lot of even better competition to go up against. Number 3. The Ambassadors of Death This is the story that most people consider as the worst in Season 7, but I'd have to disagree. Now bearing in mind this and the Silurians I've only seen once and the other two I've seen two or three times, so this could change on rewatch, but I quite enjoyed this story. The premise is that a crew of astronauts have not been heard from in 8 months and when they're finally found, only some of them are alive and the others have been killed by radiation and taken over by alien beings. The main thing I remember about this story is how it's very action packed and well paced for the most part. The direction is also on point which seems to be a big highlight of this season. The astronauts themselves once taken over by the aliens are really scary and feel like a genuine threat. Leaving the earth for the first time this season brings its own excitement too as at this point the doctor is exiled to earth so everything so far has been very well earthy. Going into space feels like a novelty, even though we're only three stories into his exile. The only bad things to say about this story are that some of the rocket takeoff and landing scenes are a bit slow and boring. They drag them out a bit too much at times and disrupt an otherwise well paced story. The ending is also a bit quick which I find to be a common trend in this era, especially later on. In general however, I enjoyed this story when I watched it and look forward to watching it again. Number 2. Inferno. This is the finale for season 7 and I'd have to say it's probably the biggest story in the season. The plot sees the Doctor and Unit investigating a drilling site where a group is drilling into the Earth's crust to unleash a new energy source. The drilling uncovers a substance that when touched turns humans into savage creatures called Primords. The Doctor tries to stop this all from going too far but gets teleported into a parallel dimension where the drilling, known as Project Inferno, is almost complete. Here he finds this dimension's version of Liz, the Brigadier and the rest of Unit who are much different to their real world counterparts. This is the first time in Doctor Who that we see a parallel dimension, something that we'd get used to seeing a lot mainly in the new series. The Doctor interacting with these characters he knows but are very different to the actual versions he knows is really interesting and well done. The Primords are a pretty cool design as well and make for a decent monster in this story. The way the Doctor has to see what's happened in this parallel world to then go back into our dimension and use that knowledge to prevent it from happening here as well is such a great plot. By the end of the story once everything is fixed, the Doctor still not being able to fix the TARDIS thus still being stranded on Earth is a good way to end the season and see if he can fix it in the next season. 
Once again, the only real issue with this story is that being a seven-parter, it can be slow at times. It's mainly the first couple of parts that are slow because once we get to the parallel universe, things really kick off and become very interesting. This is a 10 out of 10 story for me, but there's still one more in the season that I enjoy even more just showing how good this season is. Number one, Spearhead from Space. So the first story in the season is also the best in my opinion. Unlike the other three stories in this season, Spearhead from Space is only four parts long instead of seven, and that helps it a lot for me. This story, of course, introduces the third Doctor, Liz Shaw, and the Autons. It's a fairly simple invasion style story, but for an introductory story to this era and season, there's nothing wrong with that. A meteor crashes to Earth and inside the nesting consciousness escapes and uses a toy factory to take over all the plastic dummies and weaponize them to take over. The Doctor's introduction is one of the best parts of this story for me. The com comedy of him hugging his shoes to the scene of him frantically trying to escape the hospital in a wheelchair is hilarious. Him taking someone else's clothes is also a great moment that really sets up his character. There is action throughout this story too, with the iconic shop window dummy scenes and the big battle at the end between Unit and the Autons. This story pretty much has everything you need in it and there's no surprise it's my favourite post-regeneration story of the whole series. As for most of Classic Who and the other stories I've already talked about in this series, there are some slow moments in this one but it's definitely the best paced of the four. It's another near perfect story and a 10 out of 10 for sure. It even had such a big impact that when the series was revived by Russell T Davies in 2005, they chose the Autons as the main enemy for the first episode and mirrored a lot of the shots and feel of this episode. It's an absolute classic and one of the Third Doctor's best for sure. There we have it. That was my ranking of every story from Season 7 of Classic Doctor Who. It's one of the best seasons but also the shortest in terms of stories, but the quality makes up for that. I think the next season I'll be doing a story ranking of will be season 12, the fourth Doctor's first season. Let me know which seasons you'd like to see next though, and I'll be sure to get it to it soon. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please go ahead, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.